The blood test. Yeah! Ha! Ho! Yeah! Hi, Tom Thomas! Huh? What are you, fighting with flies? No! Dad signed me up for a class. I'm starting to learn martial arts. Are you gonna fight like in the movies? What do you mean? I'm gonna star in the movies. I'm gonna play a superhero. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> He'd be a great windmill for sure. <laughs> Tom Thomas! Is first period free for you tomorrow? Yeah. Excellent. Then in the morning, I can take you in for a blood test. A blood test? Why do I need that? To make sure that you're healthy for your martial arts class. And remember, don't eat anything before the test. Don't worry, it's just a little needle. A little what? Mom! And what if I take some other kind of sport, like chess, for instance? Then I don't need a blood test? What's up? Are you scared? No. Mwah. I'm proud of you. Dad never told me I need a blood test. It looks like our superhero's a little scared. I think I'd be too. Blood sounds scary. Nothing scary about it. A human body has a huge number of little tubes called blood vessels with blood flowing through them. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells, takes away carbon dioxide from them, and protects them from harmful microbes. To be sure if you're healthy or not, it's often necessary to have a blood test. The most accurate results come from blood that is taken from a vein. The sample is analyzed to see if everything is all right. And if not, the doctor will prescribe a treatment. You see, it's totally safe. And there's nothing scary about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, blood should only be drawn on an empty stomach. What's that mean? It means no eating before the test. And what happens if I eat? Well, then they won't take any blood from you. Hmm, that's an idea. What's an idea? Um, I got no idea. Okay, good night. You're really not scared at all? Mm-mm. For some reason, I don't believe him. Huh? Huh? Hey, what's going on? You're not allowed to eat! Give it back! Hmm. Oh, my mom's coming! <laughs> oh. Tom Thomas, did you forget? You're not allowed to eat now. Do I have to have this test? Go on. Go get yourself ready. Are you trying to run away? Shh! I thought you wanted to be a superhero. You're being nothing but a coward. I'm not a coward. You are. I'm not. You're acting like one. Anyhow, I'm not going there. Don't even think about it. No, like, help! <laughs> ah! <sighs> Ready to go? All right, Tom Thomas, get up. It's time. Well, thanks a lot. And from now on, we're not friends. Making an accurate blood analysis is not a simple task. Originally, this work was done by people that would examine a drop of blood under a microscope. Today, in modern laboratories, technicians analyze blood with the help of smart analyzing machines. These machines can do the job much faster, and they don't make mistakes like people can. After you give some blood to be analyzed, the test tube is sent on a real journey to reach the laboratory for analysis. In the laboratory, it moves from one analyzer to another, each one of them examining a different part of your blood. Then, all of the data is put together, and that's it. The blood test is done. You can get an email when the report is ready and check the results online, so you don't even have to go out to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks to you, we just lost our friend. It's because he was being a coward. And if it's my fault at all, it's only a little bit. Fixies! Are you here? We're here. Look what I've got! A certificate for bravery! You had the blood test! And you weren't scared? Uh-uh. Look! Way to go!
So, are we friends again? Of course we are. All right. Then can you teach me a few of those moves? Yeah, sure. Wow! Yeah! The telescope. <gasps> Ooh, buggy. <laughs> that was scary. Is Nolik with you? He said he was going to help us out. <sighs> Beautiful. Whoa, just look at all those stars. It's just like magic, this telescope. Splendid. The simplest telescope is a tube with two lenses. They gather and refract light. We look through a telescope at a faraway moon and see craters, mountains, and crevices on its surface as if they are very close. A telescope helps us examine stars and comets, distinguish the colors and shapes of planets, and find their moons. But it's only possible to look at the sun through a telescope if it has a special filter to protect your eyes from getting damaged. But what's really cool is that it spins! <laughs> No, really! Well, should we get going? Aren't we waiting for Nolik? He'll catch up. I'm gonna leave him a note. Nolik, we're in the computer. Hey! Here I am! Hello? Where is everybody? to our sun is a small planet called Mercury. Then comes the planet Venus, then our Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the furthest planet. Is it possible that life only exists on Earth? So far, not even living bacteria has been found on any of the other planets, let alone human life. But we'd like to believe that deep in space, someone is looking through a telescope, and just like us, dreaming of finding their outer space brethren. That's where it was! Come on out, Fixie Eater. We're gonna need to use live bait. Where are you gonna get it from? It's me? Nolik, he knows you already. Don't be afraid. We won't let him hurt you. There's no way. Fixie Eater. Come out right now. Ah! I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. B -b Barely. Ah! Help me! Ah! Catching fire! Ugh! I gotcha! It's Buggy! That's who you just caught! Then where's the Fixie Eater? Did you see the monster? Look at those jaws! Just like the monster! Nolik, 
Show us where you saw the fixie eater. Up there! I saw him through the telescope. Buggy, could you please go up to that corner over there? Uh-huh. And now yawn. <laughs> Take a look. Ah! The fixie eater! Or Buggy? What do you think? The jewel. Tom Thomas, it's time to eat. Where did it go? Chusaka. Did you see this tiny little... I can't believe now I'm asking a dog. Tom Thomas, are you looking for us? Hey, Fixies, maybe you can help me. One of these stones is missing. And so? And so, this pin is very valuable. And so's the stone. If I don't find the stone soon, it's going to be the end. Honey, your lunch is getting cold. There's no reason to panic. Your precious stone will be found. Wait a sec. Can stones really be precious? Of course they can. Gemstones are the most rare and beautiful of all stones, but it's not easy to find them. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, people find them underground and inside of mountains. Brave divers go to the bottom of the sea to find pearls. People have performed heroic acts and committed daring crimes to get these precious jewels. The magical shine of gems can both enchant and ruin. Remember, only gems acquired honestly bring happiness. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Chusaka took it. She saw that it was valuable and... Oh. You're right. Chusaka? Give us back the gem, all right? Give it back, we said. Why are you making Chusaka angry? Because she has to give the stone back. What stone, Simka? One that calls a ton. Dogs are supposed to keep treasure safe, but this one eats them. Maybe you didn't look carefully. For example, did you check inside that flower pot? <laughs> <laughs> this digging's just a waste. How could it end up in here? Because I know this is where we left it. Oh, is that so? All right, spit it out. <gasps> look at this. A diamond. <gasps> this will look absolutely perfect on my back of mat. But I was the one that found it. It would look perfect on mine, too. Let's bring our pack of mats and try it on them. We'll put it here for safekeeping. Well, who could have taken it? <laughs> we still need to check inside of Chusaka. <laughs> you gotta be joking. She'll eat you up. <gasps> Where are you going, huh? Inside Chusaka to get the stone out. No, I don't. Huh? By any chance, are you looking for this? Huh? <gasps> Where in the world did you find it? I found a buried diamond. It looks like a diamond, but to be sure, we'll have to conduct a test. A raw diamond looks like an ordinary stone. But after cutting and polishing each of its facets, that special stone transforms into a rare and very expensive jewel that can adorn a necklace, a crown, or a museum's display case. The truth is, only a small part of all found diamonds is used for jewelry. It's because a diamond is also the hardest rock on the planet. That makes it perfect for cutting glass. Diamonds are used in making strong drill bits and cutting blades. Many important medical instruments could not be made without them. With the help of diamonds, it's even possible to drill through a mountain when building a tunnel. That's just how valuable diamonds are. They can cut a pipe and go well with a dress. Isn't it pretty? Only it's not a... Tom Thomas! We found a stone! Oh. And now it's gone. <sighs> Chusaka did great! Oi, oi. Thanks, 
so much, Fixies. I was sure my precious present was gone. And who is the present for? Katya, I think she'll like it. Now, I've got to tell you, Tom Thomas, that's not a precious stone. You got nothing but glass there. I know. But it doesn't matter. What? I was risking my life for the sake of a piece of glass? First, it was for the sake of your friend. And second, the cost of the gift doesn't matter. It's only the thought that counts. The star. And so, this is our solar system. And it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. There are lots of galaxies in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> and I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh -uh. It's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh, uh, uh. Somebody's jealous. <laughs> well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A colleague? Uh -huh. Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda. Hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph. Because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> and now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. <laughs> your majesty. Your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, your highness. Your crown. All right, now we're talking. I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm -hmm. He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Hi. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says, this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. What? Oh. <laughs> That's what we should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. 
And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog Constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire? Here. VE73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Water. Hi, I'm all ready. Nolik, he's gonna stay home like we agreed. Uh-huh, see you soon. Who's that? Nolik, it's you. I, I gotta go. I'll go with you. No, we've got... We've got an important job. Little kids aren't allowed. Why can't I help you? Because this work is very demanding. Only it's boring. And you're impatient, so you'll bother us. Huh? But I am patientist. Patient, son? I mean, patient. Like, totally patient. Prove it, then. How? See that, uh, water filter? You have to count how many glasses of water it cleans. How many do I need to count? If you can reach a hundred, I'll believe you're patient. Why do they need that filter? Why not just drink water out of the sink? Don't worry about it. You need to be counting. That was one. Without water, life is not possible. The human body is made up of two-thirds water, and people need to drink it all the time, but only when it's clean water. Water is transported from rivers and lakes into houses through pipes. Along the way, it gets cleaned of debris and dirt. But even so, this water might still contain toxic substances or harmful microbes. That's why people use filters to clean water for drinking. No bad stuff can get through this last line of defense. saying that I'm skin and bones. There you go. That's why you need to drink water. Drink some more. And some more. Come on, come on. That's all. I ran out of room. You have to have plenty of room left. Why do you care about how much water I'm drinking? Because I gotta count. How much water is going through the filter? I really gotta. Yeah, and what? It's gotta go through me for you to count it? I'm totally full. What am I supposed to do? I've been waiting here in the kitchen all day, but nobody's drinking. What's going on? <gasps> the filter is broken. You gotta call Simka right away. 415, 416, 417, 418. <sighs> Simka, it's an emergency! What? The filter's burning! <laughs> You're really funny, Nola. Simka, he's not choking! Something's going on over there. We gotta hurry! Where's the emergency? Look! So, what's going on here? Great. Now we're stuck fixing the filter. It's not broken. The flashing red light is an indicator. It means it's time to replace the cartridge in the filter. Since ancient times, people have been coming up with ways to remember things or do not mix things up. Knots on ropes were used as reminders that it was time to pay back a debt or reap a harvest. People would cut notches into trees to help remember numbers. Later, people invented the abacus, calendars, and day planners. And now things are even easier because devices can give us reminders. 
Alarm clocks help people get up on time. A loud oven timer can save a pie from burning. The green light of an indicator shows that a device is turned on and ready to be used. A red light shows the opposite. <laughs> Today, smart appliances can tell their owners what they need to do. Without them, humans can be so absent-minded. It's all ready! Tish! This cartridge is enough for another 2,000 glasses. 2,000? And what do I do about this? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Nolik, you've done a good job there. Way to go. Yeah? If you would, I can do it. Tom Thomas, want some water to drink? Uh-uh. I can't drink anymore. And I can't wait anymore either. <laughs> well, looks like his indicator is flashing on now. <laughs> <laughs> the traffic light. Red. <laughs> Yellow. Green. All right. Thomas, why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good trip. Why do we stop now? There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing gate, Fire. You have to let the train pass. Nolik, come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop! Today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear! Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right! <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is blue is brown is gray. With polka dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right. What color's the car? Purple? If you say so. We got work to do. So take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. To avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. 
While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes, and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. All fixed. Tom Thomas, test it out. Turning the lights on. So, is it right? Yeah. Take your places. All right, let's cross. Ready, set, go! The game is up. You aren't colorblind, Nolik. You know what you are? You're a fainter. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while, it goes up here. Uh, what's a fainter, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> the Rock. Tom Thomas is back! Hooray! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow! Is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A fixie! Pixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of Fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And Fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared. And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient fixies will be discovered as well. That would be so cool. <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right. He could be our great-great-grandpoosh. Or our great-great-grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea! But what if our great-great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to! to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> Oh, our great-great ancestor, who came to us from an ancient home, be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... This is just a waste of time. Oh, uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, Lick, it's never gonna work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. 
If you think a screw is nothing, take it out with Jesse Gray. Everything will break without them with no little screws in them. Look, it's moving! It's impossible! It really did! If, if you, you think, think a screw, screw is nothing, nothing take it out with Jesse Gray. Tom Thomas, hey! Well, how was your camping trip? Uh. Seems to me quite a success. Yeah. So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe in them. They just haven't found the right rock yet. But they'll find it. I know they will. The Masquerade. So, Tom Thomas, did you choose a costume for the New Year's party? Not yet. These are no good. I've been a pirate. How about a vampire? Did that. And a knight? Mm-hmm. This year, I... I want to do something that's original. And what if... I know what! You can go dressed as me! As Nolik! Perfect! No one's ever gone as a fixie. Ever! Long, long ago, people would put on masks and dance in order to scare away evil spirits. In ancient theater, actors would change masks to play a few different roles. Everyone liked the idea of hiding their faces behind mysterious masks so much that people started organizing fun outdoor festivals called masquerades. There are countries around the world, like Brazil and Italy, that turn into one big masquerade ball during the holidays. Hey there, what are you making? A costume for a masquerade! Can you guess who I'm going as? Yeah, but why does it have to be Nolik? Because I came up with it! Fire'd be a much cooler costume! <laughs> That's not true! Stop arguing! I can go dress up as you and you! Now we're talking! <clears throat> Smart fixies wear glasses. <laughs> Your glasses are too small to even fit on his finger. Then I'll make glasses just like yours. What a cute fixie. Splendid. Not bad. Only if I were you, I'd add a backpack to your costume. Any fixie who's fashionable is wearing it. And maybe add my curls to it, please? Uh... If you don't, then our feelings will be hurt. Class! Did we cover everybody? Ah! Oh, we didn't include Simka! <gasps> and where are we gonna find room for her? What can I do about it? I already gotta get going. Then let's just not tell her. See you later, Tom Thomas. Thanks, guys. Tish! What have you been doing all this time while I was busy loading up the confetti? Uh, we were doing our homework. And looking at this magazine? And talking? Yeah, all of that and more. <laughs> That's got to be the worst lying ever. Tell me what you're hiding. Have you lost your mind? Sorry, but there was absolutely no room left on Tom Thomas. That's not what I'm talking about. What is the number one rule for fixies? Well, what did we promise? We, we won't, won't let out our secret. secret. Right, but you just let it out. Now everyone will know. Tom Thomas wouldn't tell anyone about us. I hope he doesn't. 
Well, maybe. Everyone will figure that he's dressed up like some nutty candy. What kind of nutty candy has a backpack on and glasses? We're in real trouble. I thought the glasses looked sharp. So what are we gonna do now? Call the professor, right? Or we should call Grandpus or Papus. Ah! Don't panic. Let's wait till Tom Thomas gets back. There are many different types of masks, and some of them are very important. Medical masks are used by both doctors and sick people to reduce the spread of illnesses. Oxygen masks help people breathe. Fencers, hockey goalies, and boxers all use masks to protect their faces from being hit. The blue glass in a welder's mask is used to protect their eyes from dangerously bright light. Sea divers wear masks for swimming underwater. Without a mask, it would be very difficult to see the beauty of the underwater world. The masks that people wear at carnivals and parties? Well, they're just for having fun and putting everyone in a good mood. Or as a disguise, so that no one recognizes you right away. It can be a lot of fun to fool somebody like that. So how was it? It was great! They had a contest for costumes, and I won! Hooray, that's all. Say bye to us. <sighs> I hope you won't be upset, guys. But I couldn't tell anyone that I was a fixie. Here's all I could think of. Grand prize for best costume, robotic toucan! Hey, come on! Do you think we look like toucans? Yeah? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> all right there, fixie toucans. We've got work to do. Happy New Year. <laughs> the detective. All right, there yeah, that is. Wasn't it great that we got to stay after class and watch that movie together? Yeah, that film was great. That detective, what a guy. He figured out exactly who did it. Ooh. Solving a crime is not easy at all. But it looks like a lot of fun. Ugh, I think it would be so cool to go solve a crime. <gasps> Where's my lucky screwdriver? I can't do anything without it. Here we go. This could be the crime of the century. Detective Nolik, are you ready? But we are not. There's no escaping our fate, colleague. Our time has come. In order to become a detective or an investigator, you need to be very attentive and astute. Because detectives solve mysteries, find missing things, and detangle the most twisted cases. For instance, who ate the whole cake without permission? A real detective will notice the minor details right away. Crumbs under the sofa, a trail of paw prints across the room. By following the clues, a real detective will easily discover the thief. All right. It's time for us to figure out who stole the screwdriver. And the screwdriver, don't we need to find it? Not now. First, let's find the thief. Oh, look at that. It's Digit. Digit? Huh? Why are you back at the laboratory? Our school classes are over. I want to talk to the professor. I came up with the coolest thing to make. What cool thing? It's a secret. That's a bit hard to believe. All right now, suspect. What were you doing after school? What do you mean, suspect? There must be some mix-up here. You're trying to dodge the question? You want to change the subject on me? That's it. I'm leaving. No screwdriver, no experiments. Well... You want to take over for your genius, and that's why you stole his lucky screwdriver. You're under arrest. The main qualities of a detective are intelligence and logic. Logic is an ancient science that teaches people to think with reason, to help them solve problems, puzzles, and riddles. Do you want to feel what it's like to be a real detective? Then try to figure out what I'm describing to you. I'm thinking of an animal that you can meet at home or on the street. It has a tail and it's long. You have any guesses? A dog, a cat, or a mouse? Uh-huh, there's not enough information yet. But what if I add that it meows and sleeps all day long? Then the answer is clear. 
A detective works the same way. He collects the facts, decides what's important, gets rid of what's not, and only then figures out the right answer. Understand? Then you're ready for another puzzle. Tell me, who doesn't belong here? Are you gonna talk? <laughs> what funny mustaches you got there. Oh, it's a party, right? Mm-hmm. They arrested me. Is this a game you're playing? <laughs> You believe that a lucky object can bring good fortune, now don't you? Well, yeah. And what? Now it's clear. You helped Digit steal Eugenius's lucky screwdriver. Yeah, because you like lucky stuff. Arrest her. Tula, how long do I have to wait? Sipka, you gotta see this. We caught the criminals who stole the screwdriver from the professor. Cool, huh? Just awesome. Let's go, Tula. She stays here, under arrest. Yeah, I got it. Come on, let's go. We're not joking around. Oh, and exactly what proof do you have? What proof do I have? Well, uh... Just what I thought. You have nothing, Fire. She's their partner, of course. Nolik, arrest her at once. What did she do wrong? It's insane. Now do what I said. I won't do it. Ah, you're with them. Stand with the crooks over there. Hey, we're partners, aren't we? Now wait a second. I'm wondering if you were the thief. Me? Yes. Right. It's not me, I swear. I'm a detective. Ah, Nolik, please tell him. You put it away? In the warehouse? Oh, Elisa, I've told you a hundred times. Please, don't touch my mess. Uh, appears I was a bit off track. You'd have been better off looking for the screwdriver, detectives. That's what I told you. All right, we'll look for a new tactic to use on our next case. What do you mean on your next case? Where's my lucky soldering iron? So, Detective Nolik, shall we begin? 